See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You be a vessel that God can Because you somebody might need your holy prayer to save them one day. Hi, this is Dr. Will Wheat, and today we are back again talking to you about God's royal family. How do we come to this topic? Well, we come to this topic by a, a, a scriptural revelation. And the scriptural revelation that I'm talking about is found in 1 Peter chapter 2. And we want to start at verse 9. Let's read. It says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, whom once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Now, I would like to read that same verse of scripture um, from the Mirror Bible. And we want to go to uh, 1 Peter again, chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 9 and read verse 9 and 10. I want you to hear the clarity of this translation in the Mirror Bible. You are proof of the authentic generation. You have, I'm sorry, you gave testimony to the original idea of the royalty of true priesthood, the order of Melchizedek. You are a perfect prototype of the mass of the human race. You are the generation of people who exhibit the conclusion of the prophetic, uh, uh, poetic thought of God that has come full circle. You publish the excellence of his revelation, or, I'm sorry, you publish the excellence of his evaluation and display that your authentic identity has been rescued out of obscurity and brought into his spectacular light. You were once a people without identity, but have now discovered the, the integrity of your original identity in God. Where there was no mercy, under the cruel judgment of the law of works sponsored by the I am not tree system, you have now received much mercy. What a wonderful discovery in scripture of what you've been redeemed from and what you've been redeemed to. God has rescued us from this imagery of not being able to be like God or not, um, uh, not knowing the way to be like God or needing to add something to yourself to the true identity you are created now in the image and the likeness of God. So you've been moved from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that says you're not what God created you to be. And there's something you must do to be what God created you to be. You must do something, add something to your life because you're not quite there yet. To the tree of life, you are responding to God for you are in his likeness and in his image. So you, there's a response from you to God. There's a fellowship between you and God. Um, our church is called the New Creation Christian Faith Center, and we changed that name. And when we changed that name, God gave me a scripture reference for that. And I would like to read uh, to you from the Mirror Bible the scriptures that God gave me, which is our mandate. These scriptures is <laughs> our mission statement. It is the reason that we are in ministry. And it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, we're going to start at verse 14. So let me turn there right quick. And we're going to read that from the Mirror Bible. It reads this way. The love of Christ resonates within us and leaves us with only one conclusion. Jesus died humanity's death. Therefore, in God's logic, every individual simultaneously died. Verse 15. Now, if all were included in his death, they were equally included in his resurrection. This unveiling of his love redefines human life. Whatever reference we 
could have of ourselves outside of our association with Christ is no longer relevant. This is radical in our most defining moment. No label that could possibly previously identify someone carries any further significance. Even our pet doctrines of Christ are redefined. Whatever we knew about him historically or sentimentally is challenged by this conclusion. Verse 17, now in the light of your co-inclusion in his death and resurrection, whoever you thought you were before, in Christ you are a brand new person. The old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. Acquaint yourself with the new. Verse 18. To now see everything as new is to simply see what God has always known in Christ. We are not debating man's experience, opinion, or his contribution. This is 100% God's belief and his doing. In Christ Jesus, God exchanged equivalent value to redeem us to himself. This act of reconciliation is the mandate of our ministry. Ah, isn't that wonderful? Our ministry declares that Jesus did not act independently of God. Christ is proof that God reconciled the total cosmos to himself. Deity and humanity embraced in Christ. The fallen state of mankind was deleted. Their trespasses would no longer count against them. God has placed his message or this message in us. He now announces his friendship with every individual within us. Verse 20. The voice of God was in Christ. He now has in us. The voice of God has in, in Christ, he now has in us. We are God's ambassadors. Our lives exhibit the urgency of God to persuade everyone to realize the reconciliation of their redeemed identity. This is the divine exchange. This, this is verse 21. This is the divine exchange. He who knew no sin embraced our distortion. He appeared to be without form, this was the mystery of God's prophetic poetry. He was disguised in our distorted image, marred with our iniquities. He took our sorrows, our pain, our shame to his grave and birth, his righteousness in us. He took our sins and we became his innocence. He took our sins. This was the scripture that God gave me. Now, my first acquaintance with this scripture was through the King James and then the New uh, uh, King James and then the Message Bible. That, and each one of these translations brought more clarity to the purpose of our message. But there was a burning in my heart to look into the and gaze into the face of Christ, to hear and to know the love of God in his width and his death and, death and in his length, and to share that with everyone who will listen. Now, when the Mirror Bible was introduced to me, and I go over these scriptures again, I have even more clarity of God's victory in Christ Jesus. We are living far beneath, far beneath what God has privileged us to have in Christ. That we should, as Paul said, we should elevate our minds, set our minds above where Christ is seated and not here on earth. Don't be just earth minded. Don't be captured and shut in with by your senses. Not only do you have sensory awareness, you have spiritual awareness and your spiritual awareness opens you up to the full view of what God has presented to you. And from that position, of 100% deliverance and redemption and reconciliation to God, where you find and discover your true identity. Those other school master elementary things that controlled your senses are no longer necessary because the image of who you are, the identity of your true nature, the fact that you are in the image and likeness of God, you begin to look into the face of our Lord and Savior Christ and you will begin to be transformed into what you are gazing into. 
And then you will attract from all of creation those blessings that were set here for you. There are blessings and joys and pleasures that are set in this earth realm to minister to the sons of God. And to be politically right, I can say, and should say the sons and daughter of God. But if you still, under this code of darkness, this, this ministry of death, and that's where you are. You're more conscious of sin than you are of his righteousness. You're more conscious of, of, of the lie that you're lacking something and you need to add something to your life instead of that you're complete and whole in him. Then you're going to act out what you're thinking and what you're looking at. So you need to change your gaze. You cannot gaze at two trees. You cannot have two masters. You're gonna love one and despise the other. You must lay aside all of what is contradictory to your true identity. And in the upcoming weeks, we hope to unfold this to you. As my friend said, unpack this revelation to you, bit by bit and piece by piece. Well, I'm out of time. But until the next time, I want you to be encouraged and keep on remembering this that God has plans for your life and none of those plans include defeat. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week's Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. nccfc.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC